I got in a fight. I almost got in a fight. It's complicated. I was in a bar in Austin with my wife, and 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 uh, it was during COVID, and we, and and uh, a woman came to our table, and she was maskless. And this bitch came over, no mask, all H words. Hi, how are you? <laughs> Droplets was coming out of this bitch's face. We all covered our drinks. Oh, bitch. Now I looked over at the table that she came from and I peeped game. The men at the table were filming me. This happens when you're famous. People will come over and try to rattle your cage and get you to say something stupid or dumb so that their buddies can film it and they get a video of you embarrassing yourself. And clearly I said, this is what's happening. And these dumb motherfuckers thought that it was my first rodeo. Sadly, it worked. <laughs> I ran right over there. I said, I'm pointing right in the camera. I said, you's a bitch ass nigga for doing this to me. <laughs> and the dude was shocked that I said it. He said, oh. and when he did like this, I seen all his fingernails was painted and I realized like, uh-oh. This fella's gay. Now, you know how I talk. I call everybody a bitch-ass nigga, you know what I mean? But that's not a right thing to do if they're gay, you know what I mean? And, and, and now I was in trouble. And not only that, the motherfucker was huge. He stood up, he was towering over me. He must have been 6'5", a big, white, corn-fed, Texas homosexual. This nigga was ready to fight. And he started barking on me, but I stood my ground. I wasn't scared. How could I be scared? This motherfucker's shirt was tied up in a knot like this. I said, oh, fuck this guy. Let's go, nigga, let's go. I thought we were gonna come to blows. I, I was ready, I was ready. And, and, and then, and then, right when you think we would fight, guess what he did? He picked up his phone and he called the police. And this, this thing I'm describing is a major issue that I have with that community. Gay people are minorities until they need to be white again. <laughs> I'm being very brutally honest so we can solve this problem. I'm telling you right now, a black gay person would have never done that to me. Because a black gay person knows when the police shows up, they're not going to care who called them. They don't show up like, which one of you niggers is Clifford? <laughs> We're all Clifford. This happens far too often. Another time, about six years ago, there was a, a lesbian woman that, that tried to sell a story about me to TMZ. Thank goodness TMZ could see right through the sham of that story. This woman claimed that I beat her up in a nightclub because she was a lesbian. That is fucking crazy. Bitch, I didn't even know you was a woman. Thank God TMZ didn't believe that. Because I did beat the shit out of her, I'm not gonna lie. It was her fault, I had no choice. I came in the club minding my own business and a woman came up to me, she goes, oh my God, Dave Chappelle. And I was just being reciprocally nice. Hey, miss, how are you, blah, blah, blah. Benign talk, nothing to it. And all of a sudden, this lesbian fellow stepped between us. Hey, nigga, that's my girl. I said, yo, yo, my man, back up like that. She said, I ain't backing up off shit, nigga. That's my girl. I said, bro, you're gonna have to give me three feet like this. She said, stop calling me a man, motherfucker. I'm a woman. I said, what? And then I looked deep in this nigga's cheekbones. I said, oh my God, you are a woman. It's just too much for me to even wrap my mind around. But I tell you what, I unballed my fist immediately and I softened my posture so that she would know she's in no danger. I even changed the tone of my voice. 
I said softly, sweetly, like a pimp might say. <laughs> Bitch, I'm about to slap the shit out of you. <laughs> I should have done it. Oh, I wish I didn't say that. She dropped that foot back. Boop, she was in a perfect southpaw stance. Her shoulders were angled correctly. Her head movement was good. I said, oh no! This bitch boxes for real. She threw a wild hook at me and I saw it coming from yesterday. So I slipped it like this. I had no choice. I had to go to work. I let that jab go. You should have seen me go, nigga. I tenderized them titties like chicken cutlets. I whooped the toxic masculinity out of that bitch. <laughs> That's why I don't go out no more. Just trying to chill. I'm just trying to live a peaceful life. That's why I live in Ohio. You know, I live in a little town in Ohio. It must be like 3,700 people. Small, hippie town. Culturally, it might feel like, like Ann Arbor to you. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's a bunch of hippies and shit like that. And niggas always ask me, like, Dave, why you live in that hippie town? And I'd be embarrassed to tell them the truth. But you know why I live there? Because Yellow Springs, Ohio, has the most beautiful women in the world. And a lot of people might disagree with me, but you gotta see them for yourself. They're gorgeous. But it all depends on what you're into, you know what I mean? I like white bitches with dirty feet. <laughs> if I had a strip club in Yellow Springs, I would call that shit strippies. All naked hippies all the time. And I'd only hire girls with long titties and, and long vagina hair that looks like they slept on it. And I would keep a pile of dirt right next to the stage. I come back, bitch, get your feet in that dirt and get up there and give those people what they came to see. Chalk up, bitch. <laughs> a couple years ago, I was in Ohio at a shopping mall. An old white lady, this is true, she was, she was following me around the mall, which sounds paranoid, but I'm sure she was following me. Mean lady, too. You ever see a woman with lines on her face that just tell you, like, even if she smiled, it looked like it would hurt <laughs> the muscles in her face. I knew she was following me because she was at places that had nothing to do with her. I'd be looking around like, what is this old bitch doing in GameStop and Foot Lock and all the places I like to go? <laughs> Every time I see her, she'd just be looking at me on me. And eventually I forgot about it. So then after I'm shopping, I go all the way to the back of the parking lot and park all the way in the back. And, and as soon as I open my car door, I hear a voice go, David Chappelle, just like that. I didn't even have to look, I knew it was her. And I look back and sure enough, there she was, that face. <laughs> to be honest with you, she probably wasn't even that old. She's probably around my age. But she was a white woman, this, this bitch looked terrible. going all the way. I kept my cool. I was nice. I said, hello, miss. And she didn't say anything back. All she said was, I watch your comedy. I said, uh-oh. And then she says, this is true. She goes, it sounds to me like you hate women. I said, well, you know what, miss? It's art, and you're free to interpret this art however you'd like, but I can tell you, as the maker of this art, that I don't believe that I feel that way. And she said, well, I think, and I said, shut up, bitch, shut the fuck up. Before I kill you and put you in the trunk, ain't nobody around here. <laughs> I'm just kidding, I didn't say that. 
I felt that way, but that's not what I said. I was more clever than that. You know what I said? And this is exactly what I said. I said, Miss, before you finish that statement, let me ask you a question. Where'd you see me? Did you buy a ticket to a concert I did? I doubt that. Or, 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 or maybe you watched one of my specials on Netflix. Or, or, did I follow you to your car and do my act? She said, what? I said, keep it in the comment section, bitch, this is real life. Ta-ta! And then I drove off.